All right, NYB, thank you so much. Episode 175 of the Minding Your Business podcast. I'm your host, Champ Ron. Entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. We're here Friday, July the 17th. Get ready for the weekend. Woohoo! Hope you <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Great week. Yo, our guest is ready. So All hopefully right. you are too, NYB, um, if you're ready for the weekend. Hopefully you don't just live for the weekend. You had a tremendous week. And if your week didn't go the way that you set out for it to, just know that if you keep going and stay in it, uh, great things happen to those who hustle. Okay? Subscribe, five star, five star, wherever you get your pods. That helps us continue to expand the reach of this podcast. And as always, you can go to the mybpodcast.com uh, to get more content and listen to any of the episodes of the Minding Your Business podcast. Listen, I'm excited. Um, today's guest, Chala Decoy, who is the CEO and founder of the Repositioning Expert. Uh, she has been uh, routinely on ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, any other network you could probably come up with. Um, <laughs> all of them. Yeah, just say every one of them. Just right? say all of them. Yeah, just, uh, yeah, just all media. If it's been on, <laughs> Chala's been on it. Um, but I've been able to, to you know, research and see a lot of her content. She's got a great YouTube channel, uh, so make sure you go check that out. Um, but someone I can see is definitely uh, a respected voice. Um, in small business. And so, Chala, thank you so much for taking time out on a busy Friday. My pleasure. I'm so happy. And I'm glad that you're not one of those podcast hosts that, you know, like vet people and they're like, no, yes, no, no, yes. You're like, you were so cool about everything. Yeah. Just liked it and went, gone. Let's do it. Oh, I'm a glutton for punishment, so I bring it all. <laughs> <laughs> bring it on, Mr. I, bring, I bring it, it on. on. So, yeah, I accept it all. So, awesome. Chala, let's jump right in because mm -hmm. for those that don't know you, um, let's get a sense of your background and, and that sort of thing. So share with us who you are and how you got to where you, where you are today. Well, I'm going to start with my elevator pitch because I'm an elevator pitch coach. So there you go. let's do it. And this is for all the small businesses listening out there and watching us three yeah. out of four small businesses never get asked for their business card or an appointment when they do wow. their elevator pitch to a prospect. What I do is I fix what they're saying what's coming out of their mouth so that every hello turns into a meeting. Okay. That's Let's it. Let's do it. Let's do it. See? And then when I'm introducing people, they go, can I have your card? And they go, I did it. You know, because like that's the elevator pitch. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway. So like, they're like, oh my God, you really, it did, it worked. And they like, anyway. Yeah, I it's really, it's, really it, it's cool. And that's what I want for everyone who's listening. Yes. Absolutely. So you know, what makes the elevator pitch so important? Let's, let's jump in right there. What makes that so important for small business owners? Because, you know, as someone that networks a lot and a lot of people listening to this network a lot mm -hmm. and they, you know, you, you, you know, NYB, you may can relate to this. You find yourself, you know, sharing things, you know, people are maybe half listening, you know, maybe you're not getting the results. You're collecting a bunch of cards and then you're making calls and you're not getting people on the phone and they're not returning emails and, and you're yeah. pulling your hair out. I can't do that, but some of you are pulling your <laughs> hair out. I would be pulling. Yeah, you could pull your hair out. Mine's already been pulled out. I got three kids. <laughs> <laughs> they're all pulling. <laughs> yeah, each, all three of them and then my wife, they all pull it out, so it's gone. I had an afro before I started this the podcast. The visual, the visual, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, well, what makes it so important? Uh, all right. So after all that visual, I have to paint another visual is that 86% <laughs> of buyers can't tell the difference between two suppliers. So you are the, the worst sin of having a bad elevator pitch is that you're blending in with everybody else. And when you, mm -hmm. when you blend in with everybody else, people have a short attention span already. And I even wrote a book called how to make anyone like you in seven seconds or less. Yeah. And it really, it truly, that is how fast, I mean, that's based on research. That's how yeah. fast it is. People are going to just, they look at you and they, they decide if you're competent or not. And yeah. then within the first, you know, couple of seconds of opening your mouth, they've already decided whether they're engaged or they they go back into their brain into la la land. They sure. go and think about their wife or their children or whatever it is. <laughs> so the, the key is, and here is like the crux of going on a first date or going networking, I don't care, meeting your yeah. mother-in-law for the first time, is to talk about what they care about. Right. That's it. Talk about them. Stop. No, don't talk about yourself. In the book, when I researched, people uh, would rather talk about themselves more than if they were offered um, food or money. Wow. 
And it, yeah, and if, <laughs> if I can remember the statistic, there's something like the amount of dopamine that's um, released in the brain when you talk about yourself is equal to like 10 pounds of chocolate, eating oh, wow. 10 pounds of chocolate. Yeah. So it's Big crazy. Rate. Yeah. So listen, it's all about them. Yeah. So how do you do that in an elevator pitch? Because naturally, as people, right, we're human beings, right? So, you know, we are what we are. We like to, like you said, we like to talk about ourselves. So our first thing when we meet people is we want to tell them all the great things that we're, we've done and that we're doing and how what we're doing is the holy grail of everything and stop what you're doing because everybody in the world needs to be doing what I'm doing, right? Yes. Or so what I've there's a, Exactly. And, and there's a huge misconception about what an elevator pitch is. Okay. I want to just completely debunk the whole, you know, misconception of what it is. Guys, elevator pitches are not about what you do. Elevator pitches are just a hook to get a meeting. Right. It doesn't matter what you do. It doesn't matter who you are. You think that's what you're supposed to say. That's the training. Mm -hmm. It is not. It is simply a way to hook yourself into the prospect and for, to, for them to get interested in you enough to want a second meeting or a yeah. call. That's all it is. Yeah. And so uh, let's do this. So, you know, I'm, you know, everybody knows I'm in bank consulting. Um, and, you know, so I transitioned from the banking, you know, kind of world directly as a banker to now working with C-suite and I help them find investment opportunities in low to moderate income communities. Mm -hmm. So with that, you know, how would you help me frame, you know, my elevator pitch? Right. Okay. Because so the, I'm in a room full of bankers. Okay. And right. I'm on an elevator. And, you know, of course, you know, that's a bad joke, right? A bunch of bankers <laughs> in an elevator. <laughs> that's the beginning of a good joke or a bad, bad joke, joke, either yeah. one. Um, so, yeah. So, a bunch of, me and a bunch of bankers go on the elevator. Uh -huh. I've got, you know, 20 seconds till we get to the top mm -hmm. floor. What am I saying? What is their number one problem that you solve, Ron? The number one problem is finding equitable investments in low to moderate income communities. So communities where they have branch presence, right? Where the bank does business, they collect mm -hmm. deposits, they do loans, hopefully. Mm -hmm. They have a hard time, many of them, particularly in um, rural communities, right? And so mm -hmm. you know, the Midwest is obviously full of rural communities. Uh, Chala, they have a, a tough time finding qualified investments that okay. count you know, for them, it, it's uh, part of the uh, regulation for CRA, Community Reinvestment Act. And so... So they're obligated to reinvest? Yes. Is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So they're obligated to reinvest uh, uh, in an equitable fashion in all communities where they do business. So they can't redline and say, okay, we're going to do loans over here and not on this side of the tracks. So Ron, what happens if they are not able to meet that obligation? If What's they're the not, consequence? yeah, no. So the consequence is they get, uh, obviously they fail their exam. So there's an examination that takes place every say three to four years. Chala, the bank they, does? Yeah. The bank's examined by their regulator. Okay. Right. So the regular, so basically essentially the government comes in, uh, examines them for how much they've done in those communities. If they haven't done enough and however that's decided and measured, they fail the exam. And that's the only public exam that the bank has. But what's right. the consequence of failing the exam? Well, the consequence is the negative publicity that comes okay. with that. I mean, you're going to, particularly in today's time, you're gonna, the Twitter mob's going to tear your new one. Um, you're not able to merge with other banks. So you can't grow. You can't add additional branches. You cannot uh, acquire another bank um, during that period till the next examination. Which is a year? Uh, it's about three or four years. Okay. So it's significant. So, so out of the negative publicity and the inability to grow, mm -hmm. which is the most expensive problem? Um, both in a sense, depending on where the bank is, I would say the negative publicity is probably bigger because it's going to be more long, long lasting. Mm -hmm. um, and how frequent does that happen? That they fail the exam, which results in a negative publicity. Uh, not very frequently, just because the regulation's been out for a long time, and so banks have been able to know to adhere to it. Typically, if a bank doesn't adhere to it, they've got other issues. Mm -hmm. um, so if they don't do well, at least at a minimal level, there's typically other significant issues going on with that bank. 
um, particularly at the leadership level. So let me get this straight. If this exam is not failed often, it is not a huge pain point that you solve. Um, it, it's not failed often, but however, there's a certain level of performance that a bank wants to have. And the better that performance, the better it looks for it to, I guess, get away from all those things. The, the better publicity that you get, the better opportunity you're going to have when you, you know, I guess, reach out to another bank or another bank reaches out to them and wants to, you know, unite or combine or they want to, you know, buy a branch, you know, sell off a branch, whatever it is, um, acquire a portfolio. You know, so that's another big thing um, that a lot of banks do is they'll buy credit card portfolios or you know, portfolios of customers. And so then, you know, Charlie, they're not able to do that. You know, of course, obviously, if they fail the exam, but even if they pass it, but it's just kind of barely or there, there's nothing really exciting about what they do. And what happens is from exam period to exam period, um, you can't just do the same thing every exam, right? So what you did in the last exam, the next exam, they're expecting you to do something a little bit different. So that's al also where it comes into play because they'll so, talk to me and they'll say, oh, well, you know, okay, we're, we're not going to get credit for this this time because we did it last time. We need to do something different. Right. So it's, it's just a nightmare to have to redo this whole exam over and over. Yeah. Okay. So let me, I'm trying to get to the pain instead of what you're trying to get to the pleasure. And I'm trying to get to the pain because 70% purchase based on pain. Sure. So can, could we say something like, and I'm just making up a stat, but you can tell me like yeah. 70, 75 percent of CRA scores or 75 percent of banks uh, are, cannot acquire new portfolios because of low CRA scores, something like that. Is that true? Like, do you see where I'm trying to get? Yeah, I to? see where you're going. Yeah. I don't, you know, of course that it wouldn't be near that high, but that would mm -hmm. be, you know, along the lines of that stat, mm -hmm. you know, typically what I find, you know, the, the CEO is concerned about, you know, certainly in this time, and we'll get to this more, you know, mm -hmm. this time, certainly, but even in other times, right. Um, they're concerned about, you know, again, that perception, are we serving all areas of our, you know, footprint, right. Equally. And are we investing in the schools? Are we investing in, you know, programs that help seniors, um, that help, um, you know, uh, mental health and, and all kinds of different things. And so, so the banks looked at as a catalyst in those communities. Understood. But then what is the flip side of if that doesn't exist? If the perception is negative, what is mm -hmm. the consequence? If, if the, the per perception, so fine, but, they haven't failed, but they're just not doing enough. Right. So the, per it, yeah, the perception becomes then you can, well, or the, the actual pain point then I see. Yeah, consequence. Yeah. The, the consequence is you lose deposits, you lose loans, right. To your Do competition. You? Yeah. Oh yeah. Because okay, so it, it gets reported out that, Hey, they're not investing as much as they should. Mm -hmm. Right. Based on their examination or they, they're, you know, they're kind of concentrated in one area. They're not really spread out. But then the competitor down the street is right. And so right. now you can lose, you know, in a very kind of homogenous competitive landscape, you can easily lose, you know, bank customers, you know, just across the street. Because of perception. OK. Yeah. So I, I would love it if you could put a stat around that. So and it could be opinion. So here's how it would work. Yeah. Um, you would talk to five CEOs of banks. OK. Let and me write this if. Down. <laughs> and if they thought, if they agreed with the statement that a bad, a negative perception around CRA causes yeah. us to lose loans and investments, then you could say four out of five or if five out of five, however many talk to 10 is eight out of 10. So yeah. you know what I mean? Like, so you make up your own stat and then you could source it as anecdotal. Sure. That's it. Yeah. So that's your, that's your pitch. So my pitch would be, hi, I'm Ron Brooks. Hey, did you know that eight out of 10 CEOs that I talk to are, you know, are either yep. concerned or yep. um, yeah, I can, feel that concerned. they've lost loans because of negative perceptions surrounding their CRA or surrounding their equitable investments in urban communities. Yeah. And what I do is I help fix that by um, funneling them, you know, more than adequate number of yeah, connecting Qual them to qualified, those resources, right, to qualified, yeah, qualified investments. Qualified investments, yeah. yeah. There you go. So that's short and sweet. Look at that. Yeah. Hey, look, well, and I was writing that down. Good. but Well, you have the recording. 
But yeah. so it's like we've we've come. <laughs> yeah. I know you of forgot course. you were recording. Yeah, you get the recording, dumbass. <laughs> Are we on my show? Like this is what <laughs> yeah. I do on my show, by the way, and right. I love it. I love it. I'm gonna repurpose this. Yeah, yeah. So like so different than what you said, which is honestly it is the same thing, but mm-hmm. it's 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 changed it because it's all about the pain. Right. And if that if that guy's a bank CEO and he's on the bubble with his perception issues, he's going to be like right on you. Yeah. He'll be like, can I have a card? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And, the- and, and I've said that before, too, that, you know, um, people make moves just in general, personally or professionally with that little stick in the side. Right. It's that little yeah. prick that kind of gets you yeah. uncomfortable, that little bit of pain yeah. that makes you. Yeah. You know, make you you make a move, right? Because yeah. otherwise, you sit in the chair, you're comfortable, right? Yeah. But if something's pricking you a little bit, you get up and you yeah. say, "Yo, what is that?" And when you talk about their pain, and especially with a statistic like that, they understand that you understand their world. They they know that you can help them. They that's why I'm so completely against like you're good to start with because you're already niched. And yeah. you, you already have a very specific target and a very specific deliverable, but so many small businesses who are listening to us or watching us are so generic. Yeah. You know, and, and you I know just, how I was generic, you know, what? I would, I would focus in on my experience. Right. So I say, mm-hmm. Hey, I'm Ron Brooks. Hey, I've been in, I'm a 17 year banker, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah. But you know, and I think that's unique. Right. But then, like you said, I mean, how many other 17 year or more bankers, you know, someone else yeah. comes and says that yeah. I'm 25 year banker. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and it, you know what I mean. And, and it doesn't. The, the, yeah, the biggest problem with that is that it's about you. Yeah. So anytime your elevator pitch or any messaging is about you, like I train on sales emails that stink. You know, I I train on <laughs> I every like kind of messaging. Like seriously, because it's it's not about you. Nobody cares. The yeah. sweetest word in the English language to anybody in any language is their name. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Dale I love Carnegie. that. That one's Dale Carnegie. I can't is steal it. Okay, you got you, you're giving proper credit for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, th- thank you, Chala, though, for that. You're because welcome. And, and NYB, I hope that this helps this exercise. Um, yeah. Because again, we all want to be better. So be open to um, that coaching and development, even on the fly like this. We're doing this yeah. live here with Chala, so I appreciate it. Um, but that's how you get better, right? Because ultimately, your goal is success. Right. And in order to do that, you have to be open to uh, that development. So do that exercise with somebody in YB that uh, Charlie and I just did um, do that with a friend or uh, another business. Well, come, come to the sign up for the, the um, podcast. It's uh, yeah. positioner dot com slash podcast. Go sign up and uh, you'll get polished. It's five minutes. It's there a you five go. Minute- and podcast. say that again, Charlie, you said repositioning. It's my website, repositioner dot com slash podcast. There you go. You can right. be a guest. And look in the show notes because that's the link. Go ahead and click on that. Um, continue to listen to this. But uh, get, uh, click there and go ahead and uh, you know get that resource. Um, that's a free resource that y'all is offering. And um, I expect uh, all of you to. There's a $49 oh. fee. Oh, no, no, no. Forty-nine dollars, close to three. It was close enough. Yeah, I guess cool. it's just for our production stuff. Production of course. Costs. Yeah, well, yeah. we're talking business. Okay. Yeah. You know, so my bad. Forty-nine dollars. <laughs> All right. That's that's yeah. close enough. But the boot camp is free, which okay. we're going to talk about. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get into the uh, yeah. boot camp for sure. But again, um, go to the website that Chala just mentioned. It's going to be in the show notes. Repositioner.com. Repositioner.com yeah. slash uh, back, back, podcast. podcast. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> So yeah, so go there, MYB, $49. That's, that's a drop in the bucket yeah. to, for that investment. I mean, awesome. If you're in business and you're not investing $49 into yourself, what are you in business for, right? You go and, spend and more it's than that. Like the, the first thing that people find out about you. Yeah. You got to get that one. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's the first impression. So everything else on the back, no matter how sexy everything is, you know, behind yeah. the curtain, you know, if you, you can't get them up front, then what are we talking about? <laughs> yeah. Have you been networking since COVID? I have. On I have. like Zoom, Not, right? Yeah, mostly Zoom. Um, there have yeah. been virtual conferences. Now, a lot of the banking conferences were canceled, but a lot more of the business ones have been, you know, virtual. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so I have continued to, to do that. You know, what's been cool with that, Chala, is, you know, people are learning how to do like the breakout rooms and all that. Yes, stuff. I was just going to say that, yeah. Yeah, and so that's been really cool. Um, yeah. I haven't personally tried to do that yet. Um, oh, okay. Because I tend to do a lot more kind of one-on-one yeah. you know, type deals, but now that was really cool. Uh, some of the ones I've been to where they tried to engage in smaller groups and then bring back yeah. some larger groups. But that's the thing, yeah. So that like the ones that I'm in, what they're doing is they're putting a timer 
on it. Yeah. Have you seen it? I have. And then like, and then there's five people and they have to do their elevator pitch. And then when people are saying, Oh, you know, like I've been in business for 15 years, just start talking about where they're from or they start talking about, you know, like a laundry <laughs> list of everything they do in every single industry they've ever worked in. And then other people talking about their children, like it's just, and then it shuts down. Like you have no say about the clock when it's off, it's off. And you've taken up everybody else's time talking about all the things that don't matter. You haven't connected. And then boom, you're shot into another breakout room and you have to do it all over again. And then yeah. boom, you're shot into another one. And again, it's just, it's insane. So <laughs> you were asking me how, you know, about the COVID world, like how important is it to get your elevator pitch right? It's more important than ever. Yeah. Absolutely. You're like, yeah. Let's get into that because obviously, yeah. you know, January 1st, if either of us could have known that, Hey, you know what? I need to prepare in case there's a worldwide pandemic. <laughs> um, you know, we would look crazy. Right. <laughs> And then fast forward, I was at my last conference I attended down in Orlando, Florida, um, an ICBA conference, which is a banking uh, association conference down in Orlando. They were telling us to, you know, the, basically the fist bump and wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, all that type. Really? Of stuff. You went like in person? Yeah, it was in person. Wow. Was, um, How many people were there? Oh, God, there was, you know, a couple thousand. Right. They uh, went. I thought nobody would go. Well, this is right before you know, the crap storm. Right. So, oh, you know, um, okay. this was like March 7th through the always oh, just before, like just before. Yeah. Like You're so like so... we were everybody was, you know, getting on planes with Clorox wipes, wiping it down mm -hmm. and, you know, giving dirty stares to anybody that coughed and yeah, all that type yeah. stuff on the plane. Right. But it wasn't the big, you know, thing. The in masks. Now. Yeah. And the mask and all that wasn't there yet. This was just. You know, and I had been in Michigan, you know, Charlotte, you know, at a conference um, up yeah. in Traverse City. So I was all the way up north. And then Jeez. like two days later, I was down in Orlando. And mm. so, you know, get to Orlando, no handshaking, no none of that stuff. Really? Everybody's just fist bumping. But we're still all hugging and, you know, doing everything else. We're all in, I mean, we did everything sure. except shake hands, right? Oh I get God. home on the night of March the 11th. And then somewhere around the 12th or the 13th, everything just goes to hell, <gasps> right? The stay at home, yeah. Yeah. yeah they send oh, everybody God. home and then it just snowballs from there. Um, Do you think it's ever going to like come back? I don't think so. Like I don't see anybody going to thousands of people conferences anymore in the next year. Not in the next year. No, I think yeah. it, it eventually does come back. I mean, eventually, because this is all risk it, 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 assessment, right? It's all risk management, sure. right? It's the it's the ever American deal of managing health, uh, managing mortality, and managing economics, right? Mm -hmm. And all those things are getting swirled in. Sure. And people are making those decisions. Matter of fact, what's funny is um, I'm scheduled to go to a conference, an Illinois conference, Chala, in mm -hmm. Indianapolis in September of this year. Wow. Um, now there's not going to be thousands of people there. That's right? what I was thinking. Yeah. But you know, there's going to be people there that are, I got, I'm so tired of being around my family. I got to get away, you know, cause they had to cancel all their stuff and they're tired of being around kids. They're tired of being around the spouse and they're trying to get away. All right. Then you've got, um, you know, those that are just naturally going to go anyway. You get the people that, oh, yeah, yeah, this is a bunch I don't of care. Yeah. 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 They can't make me wear a mask. Right, you know. right, yeah. <laughs> and then there's the opposite. Like, people are scared. Yeah. Like, really scared, right? Yeah, people are really concerned. And so, yeah. no, I don't, you know, I for large conferences like that, like what I talked about in yeah. Orlando, Chala, no way. I don't see it. Because last year, I spoke at 14 conferences in 12 months. And some of them yeah. had, like, 5,000 people in it. Absolutely. And, I, and, and like, I, it's just, I can't see that coming back. And so that's when you were asking me about COVID, like my funnels like were completely transformed in this COVID because I, that with this live that I'm doing, like yeah. I have learned um, how to social sell. I've learned how to reach out to people on LinkedIn cold. I, mm -hmm. I have a social selling team. They are getting them onto consult calls. They're filling my, you know, um, the boot camp, and then, I'm selling them just like how I used to sell from the stage, but now it's through the camera on, you know, on through my phone or on zoom. Yeah. So it's been, and if I get this right, this is the future because, and there's no reason because I'm learning every time I do it, but um, it's phenomenal. I'll never have to get on a plane yeah. and I'll be, I'll be scaling so fast doing this because it, all it is is rinse and repeat because do you know how many people are on LinkedIn? 
Oh, like, yeah. I, I, seriously. Yes. Yeah. I right? Mean, millions and millions of people. Yeah. I, mean, I will never run out of people. Yeah. No, not a, not at all. I mean, I'm connected to close to 19,000 people there you go. on LinkedIn. And I haven't even scratched the surface. I'm sure exactly. you are, too. You know, certainly yeah. probably more oh, than yeah. that. And, <laughs> you know, I mean, it, it's without question. So, you know, Chala, what are... Um, because you, you talked about something that is probably along the lines of what business owners should be doing and they may not. Yeah. Um, so what are the things that you're seeing that business owners aren't doing during this COVID kind of pandemic that they should be? Yeah. So, I mean, so you, do you remember the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Yes. How at the bottom, mm -hmm. you know, it's just survival. You're just trying to eat. And then right. up there is like the friendship and the comfort and the self-actualization is like, the whole, you yeah, know, you the whole being able to, up. yeah, sure. like being able to live in your dream home and you know, drive the Porsche or whatever that self-actualization is yeah. for everyone. I guess I just told you mine. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> so what happens in this um, pandemic is with businesses at the bottom is really uh, crisis management, right? They're just right. trying to just manage the crisis. The next step is survival, right? Yeah. Just trying to stay keep the lights on and the the third one is just recovery to where they were before and yeah. then the next one is um growth and then the next at the top is vision like where yeah. you want to be in like five to ten years so the problem that i see with some of my clients is they're resisting uh changing what they sell to the bottom of the pyramid so they're if they're uh, what they're selling yeah. is leadership coaching and they're selling to the top of the pyramid which is the vision N nobody can hear them right now. Like people are trying to recover. I think we're through the survival. We're through the crisis, but some, like depending on the business, depending on the industry, some are still very stuck in that survival. But now, you know, if you're in recovery, then you have to pivot what you offer to that, to the yeah. recovery. Yeah. I think you, that's what they're you know, refusing to do. Absolutely. Cause, and, and I'll share with you, you know, one of the things that has helped me kind of pivot, and I think that's a great mm -hmm. word, um, and, and kind of have that agile nature is, you know, I share with you and we went through the, um, you know, elevator uh, kind pitch, of yeah. pitch with me earlier. Um, I had two banks in Michigan, Chala, reach out to me about setting up their own podcast. And oh, their, wow. their rationale was they they listened to mine, which oh, this wow. is kind of crazy. Again, you know, all my time in banking, I'll go to a conference and people will know me from this. Before wow. they even know me as being a banker. That's and I've been awesome. doing this three years, you know, so That's awesome. it, it, it's wild. But that is great. Um, what happened was they, they're like, well, you do your podcast. You know, we've had to close down our lobbies. Right. And yeah. so you know, our customers aren't seeing our marketing and all these sure. different things. And how do we get in front of them without blasting them with another email that they get thousands of yeah. by the minute? Um, we, you know, mailing stuff out now is, is not really the thing. So how can we you know, connect with them and share our story and what we've got going on when they're not coming right in? And so, you know, they want they were interested in the podcast. I didn't have a platform to help them. You know, I, oh, I was really? like, well, I do mine, but I mean, hell, I don't. I mean, how am I going to? Yeah. I don't yeah. know what you have. I don't know what you know what your goals are. Uh -huh. and they said, well, you know, if you put something together, you know, we're willing. Wow. To and awesome. I've got a budget for this. And I said, hell. So oh I, my God, I create a brand out of demand, <gasps> right? Because, oh, it, it, I love like I said, it was two banks and they were both asking me. I was like, are you guys wow. talking to each other or what? So, so I come back, you know, a few days later, I created this whole thing, BrandPod, right? Ooh. I researched the whole podcast kind of consulting piece. Wow. I come back, I share with them kind of this guide that I put together. Like I stayed up yeah. nights early in the morning, blah, blah, blah. I was on it. And they, wow. I shared with them the price. They were like, you know, sure, you know, you know, kind of, you know, let me get you over to accounts uh, payable. You know, okay. <laughs> you know, so um, all of a sudden now I'm helping That's them awesome. set up podcasts, and we launched the first one last week, the CRA files. Um, Ooh. So I kind of found as an extension of a niche, mm. as the pandemic hit, and like you mentioned, there was a pain point. Yeah. Right? So they came to me with pain point. Mm -hmm. and they felt I would have a solution to that pain. I didn't, but then I you had to pivot it. It and create yeah. it. And so now um, I started out just kind of helping banks, but then now I'm having kind of individual, you know, somewhat, I guess, influencers mm. that are coming and saying, hey, you know, I want an extension from social media. You know, I want to be able to have my own podcast. Mm -hmm. you know, how do I do that? Yeah. And then I'm just sharing with them very grassroots, you know, Chala, that, mm. 
you know, hey, you don't have to go spend a ton of money on equipment. You don't have to do all these things mm -hmm. and just kind of help guide them through the idea and all that. And so that came. But, you know, again, to your point, that's, you know, it came as part of the demand and part of me being agile because I, I had an office. I'm working here from home. I've got three elementary school kids. Oh, so I'm part, you know, homeschool teacher, teacher's age oh, <laughs> when school's me in. Too. <laughs> me yeah. too. Yep, exactly. So, but that's what kind of what happened. And so to your point, um, that's excellent. Yeah. That's, that's an excellent super niching story. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so many of my clients make additional revenue with their super niche. So yeah. like what you do, what you did, but why they hire me is to figure that out and then to yeah. package it and to, right. Because yeah. if, if nobody's asking them for it, they don't know what to super niche in and how are they going to throw spaghetti at the wall and say, Oh, I think I'll do this today or I'll do that today. Some of them try. But yeah. that's what that's what I'm teaching in the boot camp, which is the elevator pitch, um, B2B elevator pitches boot camp, which is that nine day live um, training that I was telling you about, which is free. And it's streamed right into um, either Zoom or we're, we're in a Zoom room or and it's streamed live into the Facebook group. Yeah. Um, so that's I'm teaching them that an elevator pitch really has to do with one, a, a super niche target and the yeah. super niche um problem that you solve and then when you put those together that becomes a super niche and then you can make just incremental money from that or you can make that you just pivot your whole business to that if it's, yeah. if it's you know big enough and uh, deep enough then you could completely change all of your marketing and all your messaging to just do that but a lot of my clients are already multi-million dollar service-based b2b businesses so that what they do is they just sub brand it just like what you did yeah. And then they're making like one client today, she's coming on to do a live testimonial and she yeah. made 805,000. She was an IT company and they super niched in healthcare call centers to reduce the wait time. Wow. And we sub-branded them the on hold rescue yeah. and she made $805,000 within Good the next grief. two months. Yeah, yeah. Like just, just like that. Yeah. But just by, you know, following that process. Super niching, yeah. You, yeah. Super niche and, and that just sort of thing. Super niching, yeah. Do you find, Chala, that, you know, I guess, where do businesses get hit the most during this pandemic? Is it they run out of money, right? Or is it they don't know how to navigate the water, so to speak, by leveraging someone like yourself to develop those? Yeah. Because, you know, which one do you see kind of impacts them the most? Because, you know, you got all this PPP lending and all this type of stuff. And so. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to tell you that. So yeah. what's been really interesting is I'm seeing two different kinds of people. It's yeah. really interesting what this this is doing, like revealing people who they are. And there's the kind of me, right, who had all my funnel just went away and I had zero guarantees. I had my savings. Yeah, but they weren't like three, four years savings. Right. Right. So what and. I've never invested more in growing my business without a guaranteed income than I have since the beginning of my business, which was seven mm. years ago. Yeah. So th I'm seeing that there's two kinds of people and I'm deferring my mortgage to be able to do that, right? Sure. I have three, three mortgages, so I'm deferring them. So yeah. there's to, to be able to get the cash flow. So there's two people, two kinds of people. One, they're using every opportunity that the government is giving them, every dollar that they can get from any subsidy or loan or anything to yeah. work on hiring someone like me to reposition their business and to pivot and move forward stronger and grow and learn all the social selling skills. Yeah. The other is they, because they're so scared, they're just not going to do it. They're not going to, they're not going to do anything right now. They are holding. They're just yeah. like holding, they're holding on. <laughs> so, and I'm so fortunate that there are so many of the other kinds of people that I'm already seeing traction. And I already, I can see how this is going to scale so easily into multiple seven figures for me. Yeah. That, and, and it's almost a blessing. I hate to say this because so many people have died and so many have been hurt and yeah. displaced and God knows what negative effects we can't see in the future. Cause I have right. a son who's 11, he's on the spectrum and yeah. he's been melting down cause he's having zoom calls and at, you know, his school, private school is all zoom and he's melting down like yeah. 24 seven. It's the long-term effects of this are, we can't even know what they are, but for in terms of business, I think if you're able to reinvest in the business during this time, people are willing to forgive more mistakes. They're more open to information. They're more hungry yes. for, for help. So I think if you're, if you can invest in yourself and trust that it can grow, this is the right time to do it. 
Yeah, definitely. And you talked about going into the future, Chala. Uh, I'd mm -hmm. love to get your take on, you know, of course, none of us have a crystal ball. We don't know when this is going to kind of yeah. pass by. But let's just say we get to a point, um, you know, there's this, you know, mass vaccine. You know, of course, at some point, you know, at least the majority of people accept it. Um, there'll always be a, a, a faction of people that maybe won't. But let's just say we get to a point where it tapers down. Right. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you see? as being um, one of the toughest or hardest things for business owners once we get past this, mm -hmm. right? And we get past, whatever the new reality is, what are your thoughts on kind of post pandemic? You know what, it's gonna be the same as it was before, standing out. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be worse after because there's gonna be a lower spend, like a smaller spend pool, and there's gonna be more choice. So, yes. and there's, you know, so you're gonna have to get even more clear on your differentiator and in my mind the best differentiator is a super niche yeah because it's very rare that people like that an it company is specializing in on hold rescue you know like in healthcare to reduce wait times they yeah. simply don't have competition that's how we created the super niche so yeah. that's what i mean by differentiating it, it was always important but now it's going to be even more important so wow. invest in that yeah definitely definitely um how do you tell if a business is in a good niche Right. So, you know, sometimes because I think, you know, someone may listen to this and they may feel like they're going to go out and now start chasing rabbits. Right. <laughs> and, you know, that old Russian proverb, if you chase two rabbits, you won't catch either one. <laughs> right. I like that. Um, and so, you know, it's like Rocky. You remember Rocky? Yeah. Rocky chasing the chicken. It, right. Yeah. 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 A rabbit so a bit, chicken. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, same thing. You didn't even catch the damn thing. You know, either one of them. <laughs> Um, but certainly if you try to chase two and so, you know, I'm, I'm wondering on, in your thoughts of when you try to chase two of those, right? Chicken, yeah. or rabbit, you know, yeah. you look kind of silly trying to chase them both, but, <laughs> um, is there a, a risk to a business trying to chase a niche maybe mm -hmm. where they don't have exp expertise yeah. in, or maybe they don't have resources yeah. um, or they haven't, they don't get with someone like you to help them vet the opportunity, mm. you know, do you see that as a big risk for, for business owners? Yes. And it happened to me. I hired a very expensive uh, marketing consultant for myself, even though that's what I am, a very yeah. expensive marketing consultant, but I hired one because you can't, you're too close to it. Right. Yeah. So what they did get this and I, I bought into it, even though I know better. And this is my, this is what I do for a living. Yeah. She, she sat behind her computer, crunched a bunch of numbers, did a little analysis, did a little Google and decided that there was an industry, you know, in, in my region, in Toronto, and it was the food industry. It was going to quadruple in the next three years. And so she decided that I should be niched in there. Okay. And it was completely like such a big waste of time. It was such a, like, it was completely wrong. And yeah. here's why here's I, and from day one, I know because when I worked at Pepsi, Pizza Hut, Frito-Lay, we launched new products every year. And my job was to position them. That's where the company name Repositioning Expert comes from on yeah. the same shelf. So they all sell, but they all had to have a different proposition. They all had to have a different positioning, different package, price, all of it. Gotcha. That's what I do for businesses. I differentiate them so that they can stand out amongst all the other products in the market. Right. But we, we don't do it without market testing. And when I was at Pepsi, like if I said to my boss, I think, we should, you know, we should target 15 to 25 year olds and have a pink package because I think so, because I believe so they would have fired me. So yeah. I learned how to take the thousands of dollars of millions of dollars of research that we would do every year and make it into a small business format that you can do in two weeks and for free. Yeah. And that's what I teach my, my clients. And that she, what she did, what other consultants do is they just tell you what it should be, but they have no clue what the market wants. So right. That's my biggest lesson. And that's my answer to you is that's how you know, is if when you put them through that test that I have and yeah. you go and talk to the market about, Hey, is this a bigger pain point? Is this, is this, would you pay this much to someone like me to solve that pain point within this law? Uh, you know, that's the kind of thing that you need to be doing to vet it. Otherwise, yeah. don't let anybody else tell you and don't ask one person and exactly. it has to be a prospect, right? So th there's all, you know, talk to at least five to 10 people in that same niche who have the same title. Right. Right. And then put it together. And that's what we do in my program is that they bring back the data from the market. Then we put it into a marketing plan and a communication plan so that we know exactly who we're targeting, what the pain is, what the message is. Boom. There you go. Yep. Boom. I love it. Yep. Boom. <laughs> I love that. 
<laughs> yep, I love the idea. That's the bike drop for it. That's right. Um, exactly. Fun question for you, Chala. Um, yeah. If I were to bring you a hundred million dollars in cash, mm-hmm. all right, hundred million dollars in cash, no strings attached, no nothing. I just roll up the Brinks truck to your house and okay, boys, dump it in. All right. And say, here you go. What would you do with that and why? So first of all, I live in Canada, so the government would take most of it, like <laughs> about half. I'm not kidding. The government will take half. No kidding. Just yeah, I was going to say, in the, I thought it was bad enough in America, but in, no, so exactly. in, in Canada there? Uh, oh, oh, it's much worse. Canada is one of the heaviest tax countries in the world. Oh, good honestly. grief. Yeah. But anyway, you guys are laughing. Um, so what would I do with it? I would, um, you know, well, I would take some like for the dream, d- dream glass house and the Porsche, but sure. um like I would invest it in, in finding the best people in, you know, like Facebook ad, like in, in different aspects of the business to grow and scale much faster yeah. because I, I'm, I want this message to be out because so many businesses are struggling and they don't, they don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Yeah, that's very true. No, it's very true. So, um, as we wrap up, I mean, we, uh, this has been a tremendously fun conversation. It has, um, I know. Yeah. So, and I, and that's what I always dreamed about with this podcast was, you know, quite frankly, I, I didn't want to have an NPR, you know, <laughs> hi, this is Chala Goodcoy. How are you, you know, when did you start your business? What are your, you know, I didn't want that dry, you know. Yeah. You but know. you could also have like bad guests because there's like a Benny Hill skit where it's a bad yeah. guest. He gives like one word answers. Yeah. And the host is like, we have only 59 more minutes to go. <laughs> right. Because, you know, like there's, yeah. there's and here's like the, the guy, guy giving me. Say, yeah. All he says is yes. You know, no. yeah, yeah, you know? <laughs> maybe, you know, exactly. yeah, I, I haven't had any, you know, I've been fortunate, you know, again, knock yeah. on wood, wherever I've got wood at. <laughs> um you know, that I haven't, uh, Chala had a guest like that. I mean, I've had some very fun guests. I mean, some are more, you know, I've seen engaging personalities than others. And some I have yeah. to draw. Obviously, I don't have to draw anything from you, but no. I've had some that I've had to kind of, you know, pull yeah, along yeah. a little bit. But uh, that's just natural minutes personality. minutes to go. 59. Right. <laughs> to today's marathon. <laughs> right. Exactly. So, um, yeah, so Chala, as we wrap up, um, what are one or two best practices just overall that have worked for you that you think will work for others? I mean, listen, you know, people that are listening to this podcast, some are at work right now and they yeah. want to transition to their business. They're moonlighting, they have side hustles, that sort of thing. They want to get to that next level. They're trying to figure out how they're going to do that when they've got the mortgage and daycare and uh, yeah. car payments and blah, blah, blah. Um, unfortunately, there are those that have been impacted in the job market. As we know, yeah. 40 plus million people have been you know, either laid off, fired, or furloughed, um, that sort of thing. So it's really tough out here. Um, yeah. you know, so what are just one or two things that have worked well for you that you kind of hold near and dear that have helped you been, be successful uh, that you'd like yeah. to share with others? Well, you know, I had some dark times at the beginning of COVID. I was really wondering what I was going to do. So yeah. the two things is have some sort of uh, like, Mine is, you know, I have a spiritual practice. So have some sort of practice yeah. that's going to sustain your psyche because you are the engine of your business. If your psyche is gone, it's off. Your yeah. business is gone. Like there's exactly. nothing, nobody else there. And the, the second really is just don't give up. It really is hmm. just, you know, like, okay, shake it off. Like, you know, Taylor Swift says, but then get back <laughs> on right. and then try it again. And then if it's, if it doesn't work, but again, like, you know, don't try to do the same, the same thing, the same way insanity right right you, you so tweak it learn it and as much as you can learn from somebody who's three steps ahead of you who's already where yes. you want to be and if you can't afford to hire them for god's sake listen to their podcasts of course read their books follow yeah. what they they often people are have the same brain so they're writing the same thing as when if they would be teaching you one yeah. on one and then save up you know like if your money's sitting in the bank I don't care how safe you feel. It's not, it's like water. It has no energy if it's not moving. Exactly. So take that money and invest in someone like you or me and to get them to help move much faster so that your mindset moves and is able to create momentum. I love that. And, yeah. you know, it really, you know, teaching people, and again, for someone that's a, a former banker, you know, making money work, right? You know, money, I treat money just like, you know, it's in, in yeah. every dollar's an employee, right? Yeah. And so would you have an employee sit, you know, somewhere in the vault somewhere and just do nothing. Right. Yeah. You know, you got to put them to work. 
right? And, I love and it. sometimes yeah. you you know people get too you know comfortable in that and you know yeah. think of that sitting in the bank. But you know Fear you have based, to trust yeah. yourself enough. And I think that's another thing you talked about mindset, Chala. Mm -hmm. You know people have to trust themselves enough that if I invest in Chala, or I invest in Ron, or I invest in who, whoever that is, that yeah. person or persons is, that I trust myself enough to engage in that and to be a catalyst in the success. So if I put a dollar in with these people that I've got enough trust and I've vetted it out that they're going to help me convert that into another dollar or, or more, right? Yeah. I think a lot of times in NYB community, you have to trust yourself, mm -hmm. right? And I think sometimes a lot of people, they don't trust themselves. And yeah. so they only trust the process in somebody else's hands. And so you've got to get to that. If you can go help someone else make a lot of money, you can certainly do it for yourself. Right. Yeah. And, and again, you know, Chala is a living testament of that. I am. And many of you are that are listening. You, you've done that. So, yeah, I've scratched my living out of just like <laughs> nothing this year. Honest to God. And I'm yeah. beyond proud of how far I've come in terms of mindset to be able to spend my brains out when I had nothing. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. That. It's, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I always, you know, Mike Tyson's uh, quote always sticks out that, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get hit. You know, so you <laughs> ring, everybody's got a plan on what they're going to do. So that I first, like that first punch hits you in the chin, I right? Like it. And yeah, then all plans go so out the true. window. Yeah, you know, all plans so go true. out the window. And COVID was a punch in the chin. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Oh, yeah. So yeah. many of us. That's a hit in the chin. And so now all plans, because you'll know, think about that analogy. Yeah. We all had plans coming yeah. into 2020, oh, right? Oh, I did. Our vision boards and yeah. everything we wrote down and we posted and we yeah. did short videos on Instagram and everybody came in ready, <laughs> guns blazing, right? <laughs> And then, and then all of a sudden, boom, boom you, you walk into the ring, right? They announce boom. you, you're all jazzed yeah, up, you're yeah. ready to fight. They ring the bell and then <laughs> boom, you take the hit right to the That's chicken. right. Right. And so now, and this is personal and professional. And so yeah. now, you know, you, you're standing there, you're stunned. Now, some people got knocked out with that first lick, unfortunately. Mm. And that's tough. Some businesses, yeah. some people. Yeah. Um, others got knocked down to their knees and stayed there. Right. They say, oh, wait, I didn't plan for that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Others Get back up. got knocked down and then stumbled back up. Yes. Yep. That and would some, be me. There are a few people that that hit on the chin. They didn't even feel it. Right. That's great. And there's yeah. a few people there that are just yeah. like, oh, you know, hey, what, what what's going on? Here? Yeah. And so wherever you are, NYB, yeah. listen to Chala, connect with her, um, repositioner.com. Uh, that's where you can yes. go and repositioner.com backslash podcast podcast and then yes. or the boot camp is at you, you guys can still i know this is going to be released um in a couple of days so yes. we're still going till tuesday the 21st of july yes. at uh, 8 p.m eastern so come and check us out at repositioner.com slash boot camp Yep, absolutely. And make sure you can make that. And then I'm sure Charles will have a ton of other content and opportunities for you, NYB, if you're going to be, if you're tied up through Tuesday uh, there on the 21st. No worries, because uh, I'm more than confident that Charles will have many more opportunities. Oh, yeah. And uh, also, for you there's to replays. The, the whole Sunday is like a marathon replay. So, yeah. you know, like Star Trek marathon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah my dad's a big be. Star Trek guy. Oh, well, are there you, you, are go. you a trackie? It, I was married to one and my son is one. So that's ah, why it came out of my mouth. Gotcha. That's gotcha. Cause, like, that's all they want. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so now hopefully it all be like, you know, I'll be yeah. like the captain. There you go. Except it'll be mine, my, Th my ship. It'll be my ship. There you go. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. All right. yeah, I grew up a big, uh, well, I wasn't a, a huge Star Trek fan, but my dad loved it, especially the original series uh, with William Shatner and all that. Oh, oh good grief. I, yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> part, and back then you had limitations. We didn't have all this cable and all this. And so when he came home, you know, you know, you, you had limitations on TV and the TV was his. He's worked all day. Uh, and damn, if he's going to sit and watch Heathcliff, right? <laughs> or G.I. Joe. Right. He wants to watch the nightly news and he wants to watch Star Trek. And so either you're watching that or you're going to go read a book. That's or do so some funny. Stuff. And oh, so my God. I watched enough episodes of Star Trek oh. by default. That's so funny. <laughs> Somewhat painful. Oh, but, painful. You know, some, of, some of the episodes were funny. I some know. of them were good. They are. So. It's a legend. Thank you for having me. Oh, <laughs> yes. my God. This is so much fun. Yeah, this is fun. Uh, Chala uh, DeCoy is our guest today. Uh, CEO and founder of the Repositioning Expert. Yes. Um, so make sure you check her out on all her channels. Everything's going to be in the show notes for you. Very convenient. Just click there. And if you connect with her and her team, let her know 
that you found her right here on the Money Your Business yeah, podcast. Yeah, please do. That would be great. And Absolutely. subscribe to her podcast. Make sure you're, that you're listening. Add that to your rotation, right? Because you want to be able to get this type of content from many different channels, like Chala said. So it helps frame. You know, I can't, I'm embarrassed to tell you how many podcasts I listen to. Okay, I am because I, I get in, information and content from a lot of That's different great. people that That's helps great. form, you that know, it's, it's better than, you know, if, you know, I love to read, but sitting and reading somebody's 300 page book, right, <laughs> takes a lot of time versus their, <laughs> you know, 30 or, sure. or hour podcast. So, for sure. but well, listen, Chala, thank, thank you, you so Ron. much. All the best. Take yes. care. Nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah, great. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. All right. See you later. All right. So that was. Chala DeCoy, uh, again, president and CEO, founder of the Repositioning Expert. Listen, you want to make sure you go to the reposition or actually repositioner.com. Um, make sure you go there, connect with uh, uh, Chala on social media, uh, on LinkedIn, uh, again, on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, that's at uh, Chala underscore DeCoy. That was fun. Um, you can tell that she's got... Uh, a very good handle on the business. She understands in a very practical, um, you know, way in how to help business owners. I loved her helping me with my uh, uh, elevator pitch. Uh, so that was very fun. So uh, thanks again to Chala DeCoy and her entire team for this uh, great episode. It's always fun to have great uh, episodes. And so listen, um, again, subscribe, five star, five star, wherever you get uh, your pods and at the mybpodcast.com brand pod that's brandyourpod.com i talked about it some on the podcast now's the time to launch your podcast a uh, shout out to everybody that i've been able to work with so far um here locally in the memphis area and uh, uh beyond in illinois and in michigan i love to be able to help you now's the time launch your podcast i'm your podcast partner i can help you from uh, developing your idea um help you with equipment, uh, formatting, that sort of thing, all the way up to launch and then distribution. And so go to brandyourpod.com. Don't forget about the Minding Your Business directory. Um, that's at the mybpodcast.com backslash directory. Those are businesses that have, have the Champ Ron stamp of approval. Um, that list is continuing to growing and we're adding businesses to our directory. That directory gets disseminated out to the entire network, the MYB community and beyond, including uh, now 11 state banking associations. And those are great consumers. Those are folks that are interested in what you have to offer. But the only way they're going to know to do that is what? To have your information. I want to get them your information so that they can uh, connect with you and do business with you and possibly you do business with them on a uh, reciprocity relationship. So the MYB podcast.com backslash team is where you can go for the online directory. Lastly, um, I recently just entered um, a really good partnership, equity partnership with leverage. If you go back to episode 146, I had John Matheson, who's the CEO of leverage. And um, we've been able to strike a deal this week. So shout out to him and his entire team. Leverage is a uh, cloud-based software. You can go to LeverageCalc, LeverageCalc.com. You can go there and learn more about the software. It is designed specifically and custom tailored for business owners and real estate professionals, real estate investors, real estate agents, CPAs. It helps you speak the language of your banker prior to engaging in the lending discussion. As you know, working with your bank is, is so much more efficient. Um, if you already have an idea and the knowledge of um, a deal, whether it's a commercial real estate deal, multifamily property, or you just need capital, a line of credit or term loan or SBA loan for your business. That conversation is more efficient when you already have an idea of the numbers, right? And you have an idea of what their criteria is, what they expect, and how you meet those expectations for yourself and in the lending conversation. So the more you know uh, in terms of your ability to get approved, the, the more efficient, again, that conversation, the more confidence you can have uh, as a business owner. So this software is great. Uh, I want you to go to leveragecalc.com to learn more and uh, email me, ron at the mybpodcast.com if you're interested in joining a, a brief uh, demo of the software. It's free. 
uh, in terms of the demo. The demo is free uh, to join. It'll be via Zoom, so there's going to be limited space. Email me, ron at the mybpodcast.com. Let me know you heard this and you want to be a part of the demo for the software that's going to be live on August the 5th at noon central time, August the 5th at noon central time. But if you email me, I can make sure that you get a spot and or a copy. If you're not able to join live, I can get you a copy of that demo. Okay. This was episode 175 of the mind of your business podcast. I am champ Ron. This is the mind of your business podcast, entrepreneurship, real estate, trending news. There's no business like minding your own. Listen, have a great weekend, a great rest of your week, a great rest of your day. And remember three things we all have in common. We all want to be a little better for ourselves, a little better for our families and a little better for our communities. Go be great.